Hi everyone and welcome to the sew along. So today I'm sewing the top in a cotton lycra. Um, any t-shirt weighting fabric would be fine. Um, summer to winter weight t-shirting would be great. You could probably even do this in a merino wool, just a light, um, maybe 200 weight. Um, 185 might be a bit light, but just see how you go. Um, this is a form-fitting garment. There's quite a lot of curve in the side seams for the hip length one. Um, the crop one, of course, that won't matter so much. So the cotton lycra today has nice crossbody stretch and just a small amount of um, 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 horizontal, no, vertical stretch, sorry, always get it around the wrong way. So we've got maybe um, a good amount of horizontal stretch and not so much vertical stretch. But you do need stretch in both directions, so this will fit nicely. So whichever version you're sewing, um, just follow the video and we'll get started. So first things first, take your front and your back pieces, place them right sides together and we'll sew the shoulders. So today I'm going to be sewing this on my overlocker. I have four threads of colour that match. It is important that you use four threads for this garment. In addition to this, you're going to need to make sure you've test stitched on spare fabric before you begin, just to check your tensions are right. And you're going to need a way of sewing the hems. For this garment, I'm going to use a cover stitch machine, but if you don't have access to a cover stitch, you can use a twin needle on your home sewing machine. So, place the front and the back right sides together and match the shoulder here and then overlock that together making sure the front sorry making sure the beginning and the end matches perfectly we're not going to cut off any fabric as we sew the seam allowance for this garment is six mil quarter of an inch so make sure you set your overlocker width to that before you get started. So really our blade is there just to trim off any fraying and just to tidy up the fabric as we go. Alright, so now let's move on to the sleeve. So I'm going to sew view B sleeve, the bishop sleeve. View A sleeve, the long sleeve is pretty much the same um, technique. I'll talk this through as we go. So view B sleeve has two parts to it. We have a cuff and then we have the sleeve itself, so the upper sleeve. So if you're sewing this sleeve, we've got to sew the cuff together. If not, just jump over this part now. So place your cuff right sides together and it'll be exactly the way that you've cut it out on the fold so you'll have a notch at the top and a notch at the bottom and that will just help us attach it to the bottom part of the sleeve and once you have right sides together just overlock those two edges together and then pop your hand inside and just turn it back on itself so we have right sides out or wrong sides together and then just rearrange that cuff so that the notches match and that the seam sits on top of itself. Right, so let's start on the sleeve. So regardless of which sleeve you're sewing in, take your front and place it and back and place it right side up. So take the body of your garment and place it right side up. And we will have a look. Here is our armhole area. I'll turn it around this way. So as we look at the armhole, there's a notch here. So this notch here shows us that's the back of the sleeve. And when we take our sleeve, if we place this so that these are right sides together, you'll see a notch here, and that notch needs to match that notch there. So we're going to overlock these together making sure those points match. So starting at the side seam, match the beginning. 
and overlock those together. As we come through the sleeve, at the top of the sleeve you'll see a notch called the crown notch. That needs to match to the shoulder seam and then the seam on this faces towards the back which is the notch. So any stretch needs to be distributed evenly between those points now. Right, so now take your sleeve and come to the wrist area and fold it right sides together. We're going to sew up the underarm area, so this is notches around about the elbow, matching the notch as we go. And then when we get to the underarm, we're going to match those seams together, but it's a good idea to just make sure the seams face in opposite directions so there's not too much bulk. And then I want you to continue all the way through to the hemline, regardless of whether you're sewing the cropped view or the hip length view. If you're sewing view A sleeve, just go to the hemline, turn up the hem by 2 centimeters, and then sew a hem in at 2 centimeters with your cover stitch or with a twin needle. If you're sewing the bishop sleeve version, what we're going to be doing is gathering the lower edge, the wrist area, to fit our cuff. So in order to run a line of gathering stitches, the first thing we need to know is the allowance here is 6mm for the seam, so which is quarter of an inch, so we need to make sure our gather line is around about on that 6mm quarter of an inch um, allowance. Um, the other thing is it's a good idea to have a ball needle in your plain sewing machine and you can choose whether or not to lengthen your stitch length from normal. Um, you might find these stitches all go wavy, um, I mean you could use a lightning bolt stitch but there's really no need to. This is literally just a holding stitch and we, we can remove it later. So, start off by coming to the um, seam and just run a line of stitches through. As you can tell, I haven't balanced this to be working with knit fabric, so my bobbin's all gone funny and that's completely fine because it is literally just a line of holding stitches we'll be removing. So, decide which side you want to draw the thread from. I'm going to start from the bobbin side. I'm just going to draw it up. Now because that was um, unbalanced, as you can tell it's really easy to pull through. And then I'm going to come to the other side, find the thread on the back, and pull that as well. Now directly opposite that seam, you would have of cut a notch. So just go ahead and find that. Now, there it is there, so there's my notch there. It did take a little bit more um, finding than I thought. I must admit for a second I thought I might not have of put it in. Okay, so just draw those threads up. Okay. Then make sure that gathering is, is at this stage just a little bit evenly distributed, like so. Take your cuff and place it inside because we want right sides together. And we also want the seam of the cuff to be on the seam line of the sleeve. 
So the first thing you want to do is match those three seams there. Make sure they face in opposite directions. There might be a little bit of bulk, too much bulk there if they don't. So pop those into place and secure that with a pin or um, clips. And if you are using pins, just make sure they're ball needle pins. Then come to the other side where you found that notch. And I've promptly lost it again. And you want those three notches to sit on top of each other as well. Like so. So we need to distribute that gathering between those points there. So all I'm going to do now is just do a little bit of extra um, drawing up. And if you're concerned about how you're going to do this on the overlocker, you can always run a line of tacking stitches here. Um, I might just tighten up that top tension just to make sure it holds a bit better. If you are going to put some tacking stitches in, um, I suggest you start at that notch point. If you are going to put some tacking stitches in, I suggest you turn the whole thing inside out because you'll find it easier to tackle with the cuff on the top because you'll be able to play with those gathers a little bit more. And also if you start at the notch point rather than the underarm, you'll be able to get a better spread of the gathers. I'll just take that pin out just for the time being. Just rearrange those gathers and stitch that together. Now I'm going to be cutting a lot of this off with my overlocker blade so it doesn't really matter if it gets a bit messy. Um, the main thing is that we've gathered this up enough. Just going to push my um, gathers a little bit more further in and stitch. Um, the bonus about doing it this way as well is you can um, try it on and just check you like the look of it too. So this doesn't need to be perfect, you can just eyeball it and just um, check that the gathers um, look nice and even. The main thing is that the raw edges are all together. So now we need to go to our overlocker and um, overlock that into place just to make sure it's all secured and we want to make sure we catch all these raw edges and um, up to you whether you want to take out that tacking thread or not. So I'm going to overlock this into place. I'm going to make sure I um, use my um, blade to cut off all this extra fabric and threads and things here. I'm going to start just to one side of the seam, just so I don't have so much bulk there. So now the sleeve is in place, we just need to sew together the underarm on the other side. So join those and overlock them together from the underarm point to the waist. All the way to the hemline there. 
there. And then we can move on to the band, the neck band. So the band has two parts. We have the band itself and we have elastic that goes into it that we can adjust um, for a final fitting. So the first thing we need to do is we need to fold this neck band right sides together but we can't stitch the entire part of it closed because we need to be able to leave a gap for the um, elastic to go through. So there's a couple of ways you can tackle this. The one I like to do is just to secure each end with overlocking individually. And then I go to my plain sewing machine and I stitch those together leaving a gap for turning and the gap goes on the inside of the garment that we can um, slip stitch or um, stitch in the ditch together to seal afterwards. So making sure right sides are together and none of your fabric is twisted. Match those overlocked edges and stitch on the edge of the overlocking and you want to go past the halfway point, make sure you back tack and um, you'll need to do a lightning bolt stitch if you're using a regular sewing machine. And then just snap off, um, oh, it's about two thirds there, so back tack about two thirds there, leave a gap which will be enough to put a safety pin through to get your elastic through and then stitch down, it's maybe the last one centimetre, um, three eighths of an inch towards the end. So we've just left a gap here, so here's the halfway point. If you want to stitch just over halfway, leave a gap and stitch, it needs to be at least six mil, quarter of an inch in from that raw edge. Right, so what we do now is we fold this wrong sides together. And now if we had a look through these raw edges, there are notches. So the notch here is the centre back. Um, you'll have a notch across to match too. So the seam we've just sewn joins to the underarm. So take your neck band that we've left a gap through for the um, elastic to go through and fold it so that wrong sides are together and um, you need to find now the double notch so the double notch will show us the centre back so there it is there so that's the centre back so the double notch will match to the double notch there then on the other side of the seam the single notch will match to the single notch here and by here I mean in the very centre of the neckline that shows us the centre front so fold that wrong sides together, place it into the garment so that we have the right sides together like so. So you're going to need to stretch between these points but it's only a minimal amount of stretch and it's a good idea if you um, open that seam there so you have less bulk and as well as that, that the seam on the side seam faces towards the back is the double notch. So I'm just going to start just to one side of that seam so I don't have so much bulk. I'm just going to sew a couple of stitches just to hold that into place. So really sewing this is just the same as any other neck band you'd sew on a t-shirt. The difference is we're going to be putting some elastic in there just to make sure it holds its shape. So that will just give me a little bit of extra give. Alright, so I'm going to find my double notch and match it to the double notches on the neck band. there'll be a single notch here and that matches to the underarm or the side seam sorry oh 
I've just noted a knot coming through my overlocker thread. Isn't that terrible? I hope that's not going to uh, cause problems. We'll soon find out. Right, so once we've met, met that side seam, rearrange your work and come through so that the centre front notch matches. Okay, so we're approaching that side seam again, and as you can tell, this is where um, the hole is for my elastic to go through, and that's on the inside. So I'll just finish stitching that down. And then go and find your elastic and a safety pin or a threader, some way of passing this elastic through the band. Right, so here's my top starting to come together. Come to that area you created the gap for, and I'm going to use a safety pin and do it the old fashioned way. You can use whichever method suits you. Starting at the underarm, we need to thread this elastic all the way through the band until we come out here again. Try not to twist it as you pull it through. Right, so it's a good idea to try this on before you secure the elastic. So you could just pin that together and, and try the top on. And then when you're finished, you just want to overlap these ends by just around about a centimetre, a centimetre and a half, so that's um, three-eighths um, of an inch and then just secure the ends together by back tacking a few times. So when you've done that, pull this back in and you're going to have um, the hole there it's perfectly fine to leave it like that if you're happy or you could slip stitch it or you could overlap it like that and then just stitch it down with your machine. It's entirely up to you. So I'm just going to leave that. So the main thing you really need to make sure is that your elastic is flat. So if you're sewing the um, high hip length uh, version you can go to your hemline and create a two centimeter, which is three quarters of an inch hem now. Um, simply turn that so wrong sides are together and stitch that down using a cover seam or a twin needle. If you are sewing the crop version, we'll continue. So the crop version has a tied band finish. So what we're going to do is sew the band now. Place the band right sides together and overlock the short straight edge. Now, of course you could cut this on the fold if you wanted to and eliminate that um, hem uh, seam. Right, so once you've done that, come to the other end. And so this is our ties. What we're going to do is fold our ties right side together we're going to overlock from the angle point here up and across and then we're going to overlock this tie through to where the notch is. And we're going to do that for both ends.
here's the notch, so we want to overlock off at the notch. And then we'll do exactly the same on the other end. So trim these back to about an inch, two and a half centimetres, and then turn them through. So come back to that part that's open and just turn this back on itself so we have wrong sides together. Right, so this is what we're left with. This seam is the side seam, and then we're going to match the notch point at the front and the back. So the opening is on the side opposite the um, sleeve. So if your sleeve's on this side, the opening is on this side here. So what that means is, um, we're going to put a seam here and we're going to sew the belt on from this notch here around. So find the notch closest to this short side seam here. And then take one end of your tie and match it together like so. So what we're going to do is overlock that all the way around to exactly the same position on the other side. So because this is um, a mirror piece, we can start whichever end you want. You just need to make sure that this side is open, so that's the side opposite the arm, the sleeve, arm of the sleeve. Okay. So you'll also notice there's a bit of a dog leg here as well. Um, this is cut slightly different just to allow us to hem this a bit easier. So match those together and making sure you have right sides together, overlock that on. Now you're going to find it easier to overlock with the um, tie on top. So come to that dog leg position. And don't worry too much about getting this absolutely perfect. We're going to finish this off a little bit of stitching on our plain sewing machine and we also have to hem this yet too. So match that part where you um, overlocked off, all three edges there. So that's at the notch position, and we'll just start overlocking those three layers together. Like always, if you just do a couple of stitches to anchor your work, you'll find it a little bit easier to work with. And when we come to that side seam, just make sure that those seams are facing in opposite directions just to make it that little bit easier for you to avoid bulk with your overlocker. So my fabric is especially curly today. Yay! Okay, so just stitch that into place.
let's just reinforce this area here where the tie joins the lower front. Um, what we've done with this dog leaf is graduate from a 6mm seam, to, which is quarter of an inch, to a 1cm seam, which is 3 eighths of an inch. So what that effectively means is if you just come to maybe 2 centimetres, 2 and a half, an inch or so, from where the join is, and start stitching right on the edge of the overlocking, and then stitch out till you're a centimetre away from this raw edge here. So when we twin needle that, that'll just give that a really lovely transition down and it also just reinforces that tie edge um, so it's not likely to um, rip or pull apart while you're wearing it. And do the same thing at the other side. So now, on that raw part that's left, go to your iron and press up a hem of one centimetre. So one centimetre is three eighths of an inch and then we're going to stitch it into place. So I've checked all my tension settings on my cover stitcher, um, I'm going to stitch this using my right and my middle needle. Now, I mentioned before that we had a one centimetre, three eighths of an inch hem allowance. Um, what you want to do is either transition this or simply cover stitch this at six mil, which is quarter of an inch. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to cover stitch this at six mil just so that the transition is nice and smooth and I'm starting at the side seam so we want to stitch through um, we want to stitch the band so that the bulk is on the top side like so so you can twin needle it So all that remains now is to do some quality control work, trim some threads, give your garment a press and you are finished. Um, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoy this garment. Um, if you like the video please subscribe to my channel and thanks for buying my patterns. I um, hope to see you again soon and don't forget to post the photos on my Facebook page. I love to see what you've made. Thanks. Bye.